Now that is what you call a welcome. The colour, by the way, is dragon red, and it really does cast the Bentley Flying Spur in a whole new light. The Spur is no longer living in the shadows. This is the car that really never needed to stand out. You see, for the first two generations, it was the middle child leaving the Continental GT to be the sporty sibling, while the Mulsanne was the established and super qualified senior. The Spur, meanwhile, had touches of both. I've actually been waiting to drive this for quite a while now. In fact, pretty much as long as we've been in lockdown. I couldn't wait any longer. You see, when the Spur emerged last year, the third generation, it was as the senior in the Bentley lineup. This has replaced the Mulsanne. And as tradition would have it, this is Bentley after all. Uh, first came the W12, <laughs> that incredible engine. Now we have the V8, it's just arrived at Bentley Auckland. Well, there are some touches of Conti to be seen, like those crystal headlights. The more upright grille doesn't just deliver a touch more stateliness, it does differentiate the spur with the two-door GT, as does that bonnet ridge, a real tilt to the four and a half litre Bentleys. Actually, speaking of engine capacity, perfect opportunity to lift the lid. A V8 twin turbo uh, V8, four litres, 542 horsepower, 770 newton metres, but it's not just the grunt this car has, there's less weight for it to move around. This engine is 65 kilos lighter, but uh, thanks to requiring less cooling and all that, those sort of gubbins, you've got 100 less kilos over the front axles. Now, along with the dragon red paint, this spur is a rolling showroom of options. Everywhere you look, this car is being touched with Mulliner's magic wand, those diamond door cards, blacked out beauty inside and out, and yes, more dragon red. That's a wooden dashboard, by the way. And my favorite Bentley touch is always the rotating display. Plenty of tech in the back as well, not to mention a heap of room. That seats back to where I have it, and I'm six foot. Just shows you how much space you get in the flying spur. Uh, there's also plenty of tech, as I mentioned. I love this here. I can actually raise and lower that winged bee on the front of the car, the flying bee as well as that, the climate, the, the audio navigation. You really can be the backseat driver, but you know, for all the tech and the beautiful feel, it's actually the smell that hits you, the smell of the leather. Bentley get a lot of things perfect, that's what they do. But I tell you what, the leather is as good as it gets. The result is a worthy replacement for the Mold San, but the flying spur has to be more than that. You see, it's one thing to be a 5.3 metre long luxury car capable of wafting along. You see, this is also a Bentley, so it has to be able to get up and go. Okay, for the record, it can and it does get up. That's 100, by the way. 4.1 seconds is the official number. It does it with such little drama. And there shouldn't be a surprise. You've got an eight-speed dual-clutch gearbox, but the key is all-wheel drive. Completely composed, devastatingly quick for a car of this size. And it doesn't stop there. Three-chamber air suspension is capable of delivering everything from an either down to a futon level of ride. But it's when you get to these windy bits that the spur starts to shine. You sort of think, no, it shouldn't, it's 5.3 metres long. But it's got four-wheel steering, so that effectively shortens the length of the car. You really can attack the corners. Throw in the sound of that V8 and the huge weight saving up the front. The car is legitimately playful. It shouldn't be, and it is, and it's brilliant. Yeah, that's the thing, this, this Bentley does want you to play, but you know you've got to be responsible. Heck, this, this car really is one of a kind. There is so much mulling of work that has gone into this Flying Spur V8 that you know it is very special. You know you don't want to do anything to put one mark on it. As much as it's goading you on and encouraging you to have fun. And that's the thing, I expected it to be lovely in the motorway on the way out here. It was a beautiful, serene drive. But it's the Bentleyness that gets delivered on these roads. That's my lasting memory. But even being on my very best behaviour, it's clear that the V8 Spur does tick that box of being a sporting drive. 
It's been said that the Flying Spur has always been the less noticeable of the Bentley lineup, but you see, that was part of its charm. Those that knew, knew exactly what it was capable of. But now it has really stepped up to the plate, complete with those soft closed doors. Not just because of the paint job, this spur is a legitimate head turner. And if I had to sort of sum it up, I have to turn to a sort of royal analogy. If I had to pick a royal that's most like this car, or this car is most like the royal, it'd be Prince William. Just the right level of pomp and ceremony, but also able to fly a rescue chopper and have a beer at the rugby.